I play when I play information from Prophet Leslie or interview her on the radio, we get lots of emails. People really like her. Most people have not really met a genuine prophet. There's a lot of wannabe or folks who call themselves prophets, but very few genuine prophets. And so they want to learn about the attitude and how a real prophet operates, and she allows them to see that. She's going to tell you of many examples in her life in which the Lord has sent angels to speak to her, to bring back lost items, to protect her or some of our family members, keep them out of harm's way, comforted her in difficult times, and directed her footsteps. You're going to learn how to call on your ministering spirits in a time of need, be uplifted, encouraged, and to build your faith. And frankly, with the trouble coming, we all need to have our faith built a little bit. So let's go listen to Prophet Leslie Johnson speaking on Angels at work. I think sometimes we overlook and don't realize that God has really sent them forth to be ministers to us, to help us, to guide us, to direct us, to tap us on the shoulders, to move us this direction instead of going the other direction. And so many things the Lord has provided these angels to do for us on his behalf. I'm going to talk to you about the scriptures in Luke 15, 8. Either what woman have ten pieces of silver... If she lose one piece, does not light a candle, and sweep the house, and seek diligently till she find it. And when she hath found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the piece which I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Obviously, this is a, a parable about that one that came to know the Lord. But I also want you to understand by the experiences that I have had with angels and the things that they have done for me and the things that they have brought back, even the one piece that they have brought back, I've asked others to rejoice with me for the presence of the angels that have been with me. Amen. So I want you to know that, that the word is what it says. This is, is in regard to someone being saved. But it's more than that to me. Presence of the angel. I have some a great testimony I'm going to share with you, but just some of the topics I'm going to talk about is, one, my salvation, uh, something about some earrings that were brought back, a bracelet that was brought to me by the angels, some, an experience I had with some eyeglasses. I also have a barefoot angel. You'll enjoy that story. It involves my family. Um, there's a, I'm going to talk about a crown experience that is why I have the anointing of a prophet now. Also, uh, I'm going to talk to you about some rubies that the Lord had given me and also about Stan's wedding ring that was lost and now is found. We'll also talk about some rings that were in a silver round jewelry case that happened to me just recently. All right. Now, angels of the Lord and there's also fallen angels. Agree? Now, what is the difference? Now, one of the things I want you to understand is that angels, if you'll look up in the scriptures, if you read about it in scriptures, you'll see that the cherubims had wings, but they're a fictionary thing. They're not the angels of the Lord. When you have the presence of an angel, if you see the angels, if you see them um, in the supernatural, they don't have wings. So we need to be careful when we just say, yeah, I had, you know, the, I saw an angel and he had huge wings and things like that. Now, in Revelation and things like that, it talks about uh, the end time. You know, those angels, they have wings, but it's different. It's, we're talking about the angels of the Lord that are ministering spirits sent here for us. The difference also with, between angels of the Lord or fallen angels, you know, when you see um, even cartoons or movies, they never show that the fallen angels or the demons or the devils, they don't have wings. So why were you just putting the wings on the angels? Uh, what is the difference also? The fallen angels, yes, are demonic. They're dev from the devil's side, obviously. They come to torment. But the angels of the Lord come to bring us peace, bring us liberty, to bring the anointing in, to help us to follow the glory of the Lord. They're there sent forth to minister to us. Also, with the angels of the Lord, you're going to go where the direction is of peace. We also know that there's, if you go into, let's say you're walking into a building and you touch the door handle, have you ever felt like 
sometimes the hair on the back of they would say your head just stand up you know that it's like a danger a warning you know warning will robinson warning will robinson you remember that, that that movie so we have to understand that with the presence of the lord yes we're going to have the peace he's going to give us the direction but also the fallen angels we have to also recognize that the god has given us a warning and we are ignoring it many many times don't ignore ignore that it's better to walk away and to be late for something or not show up for something if you felt the presence of a fallen angel i have this picture of light here why do i have the picture of light people ask me all the time well how do you know that there's an angel around well one of the first experiences with me was um there was like a flicker of light that would just pass by me constantly you know one side the other side um i'd get up in the middle of the night and to see a flash of of light go by and i began to recognize the anointing that had come up on me at that time that there was a presence of an angel so that's one of the ways you can tell if there's an angel um, amongst you uh there could be a shiny light like in a back corner that's brighter than somewhere else sometimes people will see like a flame going on it's just it's de- definitely in the spiritual but they can sense it they see it they know that the presence of the angels are around all right my salvation i have a very unusual salvation story uh it's about johnny erickson tata um she, there was a movie out, I think it might have even been called John Erickson Tata, I'm not sure, or Johnny Erickson, I guess, at the time, because she wasn't married, but when she was 17 years old, she had a diving accident, which snapped the, the, her neck, and it left her paralyzed. Now, some of you know her, Johnny Erickson Tata, she has, I know, a radio program, and a great woman of God, um, many miracles have taken place in her life, and I'm, I've had the privilege of meeting her once. Stan and I were at a convention, and we walked into an elevator, and her husband wheeled her in a little chair and wheeled her into the elevator with me, and I started crying. And, I, and she looked at me, and she was, you know, says, are you okay? And I said, I said, it's because of you that I'm saved. And I said, because I said, I went to see the movie when I was just 17 years old. And I said, what year did it come out? And she said, in 1979, because I was trying to figure out, you know, yeah, at that time, what, what exactly year. And I'm like, mm, no, it had to come out before then because I was 17 years old. And I was so puzzled. I went and I spent days, I mean days, with the Lord. And I spent hours just praying and seeking God. I'm going, Lord, I went to the theater with my friend when I was 17 years old to see this movie and you're telling me I really was 22 because I would have been married by then. I had had Sean by then. And I said, I didn't have a child. What's going on? All right, so when I was 17, I went to go see Johnny Erickson Tata at this movie theater with my friend. Her name was Pam. At the end of the movie, there was an altar call. Now, how many of you know that in movie theaters, even way back when, when I was 17, you don't have an altar call they don't allow an altar call at a movie theater. Not at all. So what happens is that the, uh, the, the, everybody's leaving the theater. I'm crying so hard. I'm bawling my eyes out. And my friend keeps trying to pull me out of the movie theater. And I was like, no, I've got to go down front. I've got to go down front. I've got to accept Jesus. I have to go up front. She's looking at me like I'm some kind of weirdo. I'm like, you want to come with me? She goes, no, we got to go. And I said, I've got to go. I said, don't you hear this man speaking? She goes, what man? And I grab her and I run down to the front of the, the movie theater by the stage. And so the man there standing there leads me into the Lord's Prayer and I repented before God. He gave me a little card that says, you know, about the date of my salvation. And I went home and I put it on my bulletin board right there in my bedroom. Well, what is interesting is the next morning that that, bull, that, that, that card that this man gave me was gone. It was missing. I'm like, what in the world? Why? Who would have taken that out of my room? My brothers, you know, my sister, who took it out of there? I was saved, and I wanted that little thing to show that that was the date that I was saved. 
Afterwards, um, I began to talk to my friend. I said, didn't you, you know, why didn't you ex- receive Jesus then? Why didn't you say anything? She goes, Leslie, what were you doing? You were just down there crying. You were going, yes, and crying and bawling. Why were you doing that? I went, I spoke to that man. I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And I said, I can't understand why you didn't. Well, as I sought the Lord on this, he spoke to me very, very clearly. I, now if you've got to stay with me on this one. <laughs> I had the experience five years before this movie came out. Five years. My first real experience with an angel of the Lord was when I was 17 years old. I have no idea what movie I really saw, but I could tell you about the movie even to this day. I went forth, and I accepted Jesus, and an angel of the Lord led me to my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My, praise the Lord. I know it seems strange, but that's the absolute truth. Can't do anything about that. But I, it was strange to me when I started to do the DVD on what it takes to be a prophet, and I started realizing, wow, it was ahead of time. There was a ahead of time God experience. And I was so moved by that, what the Lord did for me. Barefoot angel. Yes, I have a barefoot angel, apparently. Uh, At least one of them is barefoot. In 1998, um, we had an office for the Prophecy Club that was just a couple miles from the house. This November morning, and I remember it being November, we had our first snowfall there in Topeka. We'll be right back after this message. Lindsay Williams has just come out with more information, and it's called Cyprus, the Elite Money Grab. Topics are Cyprus, the startling real story you didn't get. The American dollar, how long? Healthcare, a trap. America, the world's only hope. Saudi Arabia, look out. Iran, saber rattling. Derivative, collapse being discussed. Behind closed doors, all of these items have already been decided. It's called Cyprus, the elite money grab, not available on the internet. You must call 785-266-1112. A single DVD gift of $27 or more. Call 785-266-1112. Cyprus, the elite money grab by Lindsay Williams. Call now, 785-266-1112. 785-266-1112. Call now. Thurman Scribner has had an international healing ministry for 36 years and has a near 100% healing success rate for many diseases. He is not the healer. Jesus is the healer. But he gives you the scriptures and countless stories of people who have received the faith and received healing in his meetings. He'll speak Friday, May 17th from 7 to 10.30 and Saturday from 1 to 3 p.m. Then he'll be praying for people from 7 to 10.30. He strongly recommends that people attend both meetings to build your faith for your healing. That's Friday, May 17th from 7 to 10.30 and Saturday from 1 to 3 and then prayer from 7 to 10.30 that evening. As always, we suggest a gift of $10 at the door and a free will offering will be taken. That's the Prophecy Club, 2540K Avenue in Plano, behind the Whataburger. Friday, May 17th, 7 to 1030, Saturday from 1 to 3, and then prayer, Saturday from 7 to 1030. See you there! And now, back to the program. This November morning, and I remember it being November, we had our first snowfall there in Topeka. It was a fresh, new snow. You know, the kind that's so beautiful. Nobody's touched it. The the cars haven't got it dirty or anything like that. But it was coming down very, very hard. I see somewhat, but it was very beautiful. Leslie Ann and I leave to go by the office just up the road, just a corner away. And as we get to the stop sign to make a right-hand turn to the office, to the Prophecy Club, I started, as I put on the brake, I could tell that because of the snow, the fresh snow, it was slick. As I turn to go down the road to the office, my car starts spinning. As it's spinning, I could see what was coming towards me was a little red car, and behind it was a humongous 
white suburban. <laughs> So all this is, you know, happening so fast, and and as I'm seeing this happen, I know that the, maybe that little white, or the, excuse me, that little red car might miss me, but that big white Suburban's going to smack Leslie Ann and I. Leslie Ann and I, Leslie Ann and I immediately just, praise the Lord, she's been taught to do this. I grab the steering wheel, and she just puts her hands together. Blood of Jesus! Blood of Jesus! Blood of Jesus! Blood of Jesus, that's all I can say is I'm holding the steering wheel as it's spinning like this. Blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus. All of a sudden, my car stops, and it's facing the opposite direction of where I turned. Well, I wait for the impact because, you know, one of the cars is going to hit me. And as I open up my eyes and I'm facing the opposite direction, I see the little red car go in front of me. I'm like, okay, hold on, because that white Suburban's about to hit us. I wait. You know that little saying now, wait for it, wait for it, just wait for it. Well, waiting for it, it never, ever came. All of a sudden, Leslie Ann and I, we turn and we look in our rear, you know, I look, turn around and look in the back. She looks in the back and we're like, where did it go? Where did it go? She was like, Mom, where did it go? And I said, wow, I don't know. <laughs> I guess the Lord moved it. That's all I can say. The Lord moved it out of the way. I mean, don't you know, what they think, think it's kind of strange, they're already on the highway when they're thinking we were just on this little small road over here. All of a sudden, they are moved. That was the first part of this experience. As we get up into the, the office parking lot, I pull in, and it was a circular drive, and I stop in front of where there was a little porch. And as I'm walking through the snow... Leslie Ann just decides to stay into, in the car, and I, I've, I've, I've got to go in. I've got to go tell everybody what just happened. I mean, what an experience I just had. And so I've I got to go tell them. I walk in, and I start telling everybody that's in the office there. I said, I said let me tell you about this experience, and I threw, threw the whole story with them. Well, since it was coming down so hard, the snow, we had a, uh, she was about eight or eight and a half months pregnant uh, woman that was working for us. And Stan says, Heidi, I want you to just go on home. Um, you know, you don't need to be here, and we're going to call it, you know, a short day today anyway, so we need you to go home. Well, Dave, that was working for us, he says, I'll take her home. I want to make sure she gets uh, home okay. He told her to go wait out there on the little, little porch area, and he would drive up and pick her up. His car was in the back. She walks out, and she's, and she's looking at my car, and then she looks in the, the, the footprints in the snow, and she starts laughing. She's laughing hysterical like, wow. Leslie, you know, she's, she just walked barefoot in the snow. She just walked barefoot from her car into, the, into this office. And she goes, oh, baby, it was Leslie Ann. Nope, Leslie Ann's still sitting in the car. So she looks down again and she starts seeing my footprint next to these big barefoot prints right along with my shoe footprint. As, as she sees this, and she's like laughing because she's like, Leslie's got a barefoot angel. This just really taught me something because this was a fresh snow. All I had done was got out from my car into the office and walking through the fresh snow. How God revealed my angel, the angel that was with us at the time. And how that vehicle was just transported somewhere else. Kept us from it having a terrible accident. Kept us from it being our last days here on earth. Hallelujah. There's experiences that you've had with angels that maybe you have just neglected to see. Or maybe you have now reflected back going, Thank you, Lord, for sparing me. Thank you, Lord, for sending that angel to be round about me to protect us and take care of us. Hallelujah. So I don't know if you, if you had barefoot angels, but... I know at least one of mine is. All right, the red eyeglasses. Um, my dad was an eye surgeon, an ophthalmologist, and I had gone to Odessa. Um, I was going to be there for a couple of weeks, and Stan was still in Kansas at the time. And I decided I was going to get my eyes checked, and I wanted to have my glasses 
you know, to see what the prescription, they wanted to have them. And I didn't know if I was going to just have the new prescription put in those or if I was going to, you know how we are, or if I was going to get a new frame, probably a new frame. You know, I had to stay up on the times there. So I asked him, I said, I need you to go to my dresser and get those red glasses and send them to me, mail them to me. Well, like most men, he couldn't find them anywhere. He said he looked high and low and all over the place in the bathroom and on the dresser and in the kitchen and... And I'm like, they're right there. They've got to be right in front of your face, you know, they, maybe next to the, to the bed, on the bedstand. He's like, well, they're nowhere to be found. Well, that night I prayed and I said, Lord, I said, you're just going to have to send an angel to put them where Stan can see them. Just have him put those glasses, have the angel of the Lord put the glasses where Stan can see them so the next morning he can send them to me. Because I knew Stan, he was just going to, eh, you know, she's going to get a new pair of glasses anyway. I don't need to send that. Anyway, so the next morning, I give this phone call, and Stan's all excited, and he goes, Leslie, you're not going to believe it, but when I got up this morning, and I'm walking from the, the bedroom into the, the bathroom, she goes, he goes, your glasses were right in the middle of the floor, right there in the middle of the floor, on the carpet, there's your red glasses, and I was like, thank you, Lord, holy, and I thought, I can't tell him what just happened, he goes, how did they get there, and I said, well, an angel of the Lord put them there, so you would Send them off to me. I guess I'll send them off to you. This was another experience. I began to see in my early walk with the Lord and early being understanding the anointings of God and the Holy Spirit how to, to be that childlike faith and expect it. If it says in the Word, they're sent there for us, I believed it. I didn't let some kind of past religion stop me from believing the Word. I didn't let something from someone would say, oh, that can't be real, stop me from believing the Word. So I was very childlike faith in this, and I, I've tested it over and over and over again. I just send the angels out to do the work, and it happens. It happens over and over and over and over again. My family can tell you so many testimonies that I have had experiences with or they've had experiences with. This is exciting to me, and I want it to be exciting to you because they're there for you too. I don't have them all just for me. (laughs) I have a lot of them, but they're not all just for me. You've got to just trust and believe the Lord for for you too. With rubies, we were at one of our Prophecy Club um, crusades. During the time of a real special anointing and and in the presence of the Lord, um, I was on my face before God, and I had my hands just out like this. And what I was doing, I was just giving him... I remember it because it was my personal time with the Lord. I was giving him, in a spiritual sense, everything. It meant me my whole being, my, you know, everything that he's blessed me with. I, was, I just had my hands out and I was just giving it to him. All of a sudden, as my eyes were closed, I could feel like drops of just something going in my hands. And when I opened up my eyes, my, there's like rubies all, I mean, in the spiritual sense, all in my hands, overflowing, and I was just, I was awestruck. I was awestruck because I could see it. I know it was in the spiritual, but I could see it. It was right there. And see, if you understand like the word, you're going to see it in the what? Spirit realm first before you see it in the natural. Not so that I like rubies, yes. I love rubies, yes. I even named my dog Ruby. But I, <laughs> but it, what happens is like, It's not that, it's just that I know the Lord, He loves us children. And, you know, when there's something that's special to us, He wants to pour out that blessing. And what He was doing even more to me than saying, this is to come, He was saying to me that, because you've given it all, I pour back to you. That experience, yes, was with an angel. I felt the presence of the angel. I felt them tapping my shoulder. I felt them right there, like they were pouring it in my hands. When we got back from that crusade that we did, it was only within a couple of weeks, we received a box to the Prophecy Club, a huge, good-sized box. And when we opened it up, we didn't have, there was no return address on it at all. When we opened it up, there's all these jewels, some worth a lot, some worth nothing but pretty, and it was a little note in there, something to the effect that 
just as Leslie received the because I shared it, just as Leslie received those rubies from the Lord, I now give this to you. We give this box of all these gems to us. It came, I mean, it was just within a couple of weeks. You know, we haven't done anything with it. It's kind of hard to do anything with it, but I don't know. Someday maybe I'll make everybody jewelry. (laughs) But I'm just saying that God has blessed, and he showed in the spiritual realm that it was coming. And just all it did was really just encourage, I think, all of our faith, from our, our children to the staff. You know, we've given stuff away to Stan and I specifically. How much he just loves us. So He just loves us so much. And there was no return address to this thing. Not at all. We tried to figure it out. Couldn't figure it out. All right, a phone call. This is actually... I'll give you one incident, but there's many, many phone calls that happen. And yeah, that's my sweetie. I just had to have that picture because this has to do with he and I. Um, this was before, actually, we were right before we were in the ministry... But I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. I loved the Lord, and I was beginning to sense the presence of angels, sense the presence of them nudging me, sense the presence of, like, it's speaking in my ear, and then I react, I do it. Um, I needed to get a hold of Stan. Didn't know how to get a hold of Stan. He was... In Dale Carnegie, he was putting a class together in some little remote town. Did not know how to, uh, you know, because he didn't have the pho- a cell phone with him. Did not know how to contact him. Wasn't quite sure even, he wasn't even quite sure when he left, what town he was going to be in. I began to pray and cry out to the Lord. I said, I've got to know where Stan is for whatever the reason was. I don't know what it was now, but I needed to get a hold of him. And you know how we women do, it's like, okay, well, 7 p.m., I'll give him till about 8.15, and then I'll start worrying, because he should have called me by now. Well, 8.15 came. I said, Lord, I'm desperate. He hasn't called. Time has run out, but I want to say thank you for listening, and thank you for your prayers and your gifts of support. God bless. Now from the Prophecy Club, some exciting opportunities for you. Lindsay Williams has just come out with more information, and it's called Cyprus, the Elite Money Grab. Topics are Cyprus, the startling real story you didn't get. The American dollar, how long? Healthcare, a trap. America, the world's only hope. Saudi Arabia, look out. Iran, saber rattling. Derivative, collapse being discussed. Behind closed doors, all of these items have already been decided. It's called Cyprus, the elite money grab, not available on the internet. You must call 785-266-1112. A single DVD, gift of $27 or more, call 785-266-1112. Cyprus, the elite money grab by Lindsay Williams. Call now, 785-266-1112. 785-266-1112. Call now. Thurman Scribner has had an international healing ministry for 36 years and has a near 100% healing success rate for many diseases. He is not the healer. Jesus is the healer. But he gives you the scriptures and countless stories of people who have received the faith and received healing in his meetings. He'll speak Friday, May 17th from 7 to 1030 and Saturday from 1 to 3 p.m. Then you'll be praying for people from 7 to 1030. He strongly recommends that people attend both meetings to build your faith for your healing. That's Friday, May 17th from 7 to 1030 and Saturday from 1 to 3 and then prayer from 7 to 1030 that evening. As always, we suggest a gift of $10 at the door and a free will offering will be taken. That's the Prophecy Club, 2540K Avenue in Plano, behind the Whataburger. Friday, May 17th, 7 to 1030, Saturday from 1 to 3 and then prayer Saturday from 7 to 1030. See you there!